Hello, this is Carla Marie with Fun Schooling the Sensational Six. And you know what? It's been a long time since I've made a video. I have a couple of people behind me doing some things on the computer, but wanted to pop in really quickly and give you a quick update as far as what's going on with our Fun Schooling crew. Uh, things have been busy, things have changed a lot since uh, our last videos. Um, yes, we still focus on child-led learning and um, unschooling of sorts, but things are kind of changing a little bit, um, and so I wanted to share that with you. Um, we are very passionate about child-led learning and very passionate about tapping into the gifts and the talents and the passions of our children and allowing them to flourish and to, uh, to take control of their own education and the things that they're interested in. Um, the way that we do that... Um, has changed a little bit, so I want to I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about that. But if you want um, more regular updates from our uh, fun schooling family, um, you can go to our Facebook page, which is uh, titled the same name, Fun Schooling the Sensational Six, and <clears throat> or you can go to um, our Instagram page, which is also called Fun Schooling the Sensational Six. And you can get daily updates as far as some of the activities and the things that we do, our uh, field trips and stuff that we may not necessarily make a YouTube video about, but they're things that we do on a regular basis. And you can always take part in that in conversations and also share the things that you're doing with your family. So that will give you a more daily update as far as what it is that we're doing um, in between our informational videos. So that's a little tidbit for you. Um, update. Things are about to start getting a little bit more busy. I mean, when the kids were younger, it was easier to just say, hey, everybody's going to take baseball because we can all be going in one place at one time, which is really convenient for a big family. But as they get older and their passions change and their in things that they're interested in changes, they all are going in different directions so I'm not able to tape as often as I <laughs> used to simply because of that I'm working with them individually on their projects and we're kind of outnumbered it's six of them and two of us but um, we try our best to give everybody uh, our time and our commitment to the things that they're interested in and help them pursue those things so very time consuming but well worth it um, so our schedules are about to change. I mean, we have kids that want to do basketball, karate, soccer, baseball. Um, we have one son that is in a uh, flight academy. We have a daughter that's writing books. So we'll tell you all about that in another uh, in another uh, video. But one thing that we have been doing that has changed since we have done our last videos and our theme days. And so if you do follow us on Instagram or on Facebook you have noticed that we have theme days and our theme days we don't do um, curriculum or we don't do workbooks or anything of that sort but what we do do is we focus on hands-on activities and projects that <clears throat> focus on a particular theme that allows them to be able to utilize that knowledge when they are pursuing their interests. Okay, so it's just every single day there's a different theme and I'll share those with you. But every single day there's a different theme and um, then they take that information and apply it to what it is that they're learning at the moment. So we have uh, what we call uh, Math Challenge Mondays. So Math Challenge Mondays looks different for my younger crew than it does for my um, teenagers. Um, for the younger crew, generally, we have a theme every month. So this month, for example, is, um, and I'll do another video on simply the theme days as well. But um, for the month of January, it's Math in the Kitchen. So we are focused on all of the math that is involved when it comes to cooking, preparing food, shopping, everything regarding the kitchen. Um, and how math applies to those things. Fractions, multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, um, decimals, measuring. Uh, so all those kinds of things. And those are things that uh, all, all of the age children are involved in. Um, and then we walk those things out with actually making food. So we learn the concepts and then we figure out how to put them into action while we're cooking in the kitchen. It's just showing them how math applies to everyday life versus sitting down and doing a page of 
problems. <laughs> so it's much more helpful that way. And they love it. We enjoy it. We get to interact with one another. So it's helpful. And it's yummy. <laughs> so every month we'll have a different math challenge um, theme. And as far as the older children, generally a couple times a month I do a math challenge that has to do with real life decisions, budgeting, shopping, um, finance, personal finance, things of that nature that they're going to encounter as they get older and have to handle their own funds and make financial choices. So those are things at 13 and 14 that they need to be able to do now so that they are responsible with their money as they grow older. So we do those kinds of activities with the older ones on Math Challenge Monday. Uh, and then we have Tuesdays, which is where, who, or what in the world Tuesday. So I on on that day we either choose a um, geography project or a biography or a historical event um, that we study. We talk about. We might watch a movie about it or a documentary. We might read a book about it or we might do an actual project. So it could be history or geography related or biography related on Tuesdays. Um, and the wide range. Again, we don't like do anything out of a textbook, um, but we will have projects related to those um, topics. On Wednesday is Reading Wednesday. Now we read constantly. If you know my family, we are passionate readers. <laughs> so every day is a reading day, but Wednesday is a day when I try to, um, and it is, it is a juggling act, actually read with each of the younger kids. Now the older kids are usually reading independently. We either do a uh, <clears throat> reading with them, having them reading to us, us reading to them, I'm challenging them on another level. So it's really kind of for me to see their growth in their reading more than just everyday reading, um, but working on new reading skills. So that's what Wednesday is all about. Thursday, so Wednesday is called Read About It Wednesday. Thursday is called Write About It Thursday. Um, and that's when we work on our creative writing. Um, Big Sis, she's writing books. She's writing all the time. So I don't really do anything generally with her on writing on Thursdays. Um, <coughs> but my uh, older son generally does writing on um, writing prompts on topics that he's very passionate about. So we still try to work that in. And then on Friday is Create and Explore Friday. And that's when we do science and or art. So we might do both or we might do one or the other. But we'll have projects. So all of those days are kind of interactive, hands-on, um, fun projects that we do. They only take maybe an hour, hour and a half, two at the most if it's long or if we're just dragging out or we get started late. Um, and then after we do those projects, they are off to do the things that they themselves are passionate about. Or um, like my son may go study aviation or he took up uh, guitar playing, so he may go do that. Whatever it is that they're currently working on, passionate about, interested in, they move on uh, for the rest of that to, to do those things. So just wanted to share that with you and how that kind of works in our family. Still child-led learning. Those are kind of my ways of strewing new information uh, for them every day on a particular topic and then allowing them to take that information and apply it to the areas that they're passionate about. Um, and it works well. There are some days where we miss a theme simply because life happens. If I have a hair day where I have to do my girl's hair, guess what? That takes a lot of time for both girls. So we may end up doing math Monday on the computer, doing math games and things of that nature on the computer. Or we may end up watching a documentary versus something that takes me um, personally or more hands-on. So it just depends. We try to stick to it, but we're not. It's more, I, you guys should know by now that I don't like the word schedule. I like routine. So we try to keep up with the routine, but if we don't, we don't, but I mean, we're not on anyone else's schedule. That's the beauty of homeschooling. And, um, that's the beauty of, of doing this being year round learners as well is that you're not on anyone else's schedule and you have the freedom and the flexibility to do things in a way that works for your family. And so we love it. It works for us. And I think my kids look forward to it. We have the theme days posted on our uh, chore charts. So everybody kind of knows what day to expect. But again, it's not written in stone. If we end up doing something different for that day, no big deal. It's not something that we uh, we beat ourselves up about. It's just a 
a, uh, a soft uh, reminder of some things that we can we can focus on so and then it allows me to spend individual time with them and then I wanted to talk about something and I'm gonna do a different video uh, regarding this because this is gonna take a whole lot more time but a lot of people mention to me how they understand how child-led learning or unschooling um, interest-led learning works for elementary grades or younger children but they have a hard time understanding how these the same concept um, and uh, flexibility and relaxed atmosphere can work for older children in particular children that um, are college bound and so I'm going to talk more about that how it has changed we have not gone into high school yet although my children have um, are already earned some high school credits um, regarding the things that we've exposed them to and things they've done but I'm going to do another video coming up here very soon that will talk about how child-led learning changes in our family from elementary school to junior high and above so you'll get to see kind of how we still focus on their passions and their interests but we do it in a different way it is more um, it's more of a tunnel vision and although we continue to explore our children to all kinds of topics, all kinds of experiences, um, when they have identified what they believe is going to be uh, their thing, then the way that we go about um, doing junior high and high school is a little different than... Um, than elementary school. Some may call it uh, delight directed learning or whatever you want to call it. I, I'm i kind of tired of the labels because sometimes one label means one thing to another person that it then it means to to me or vice versa. So really I'm just sharing with you what works for us, what we do. You can pull from it what you may, what may work for you. Ignore it all. <laughs> completely up to you and deciding what works for your family but I just wanted to share those so I'm gonna be doing a video in the next week to explain how the transition from elementary school grades um, to junior high and above uh, how they change for us um, in our household and how that how that may be able to help you see um, what may work for you so just wanted to kind of give you an update on what's going on with us uh, pretty busy we do have our new family computer lab as you can see we got uh, six new computers we only have three um, set up now because that's all we only have the room for three at the moment but uh, so we're really excited about that it really expands our ability to be able to have multiple kids working on uh, projects at the same time so that's very helpful so I just wanted to give you an update a lot of people ask a lot of questions what are you making another video well <laughs> I have to have the time to make it and the opportunity to uh, you know have the house quiet enough for you to hear me <laughs> yes we have six kids so sometimes it can get a little loud but so yes, again, you can follow our daily progress, the projects and the things that we're doing on our Facebook page or our Instagram page. Um, you can come here for videos. I will be updating and giving, uh, uh, taping several new videos coming up here soon. So be patient with me, please. And, uh, and I'll also be doing another video on our theme days. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. And I look forward to communicating with you uh, regarding our next video, especially the one, um, the elementary to junior high transition. I think a lot of people will enjoy that and it will kind of be an aha moment as far as seeing how you can approach child-led learning in a more relaxed um, homeschooling environment without such rigidity and fear when it comes to college bound students. So thank you for listening and we look forward to communicating with you regarding all of our videos. If you have any questions, feel free to post them. You can contact me on Facebook or Instagram. More than happy to answer any questions, help anybody out. But you know what? Best of all, I like to learn from you guys too because none of us have it all together and none of us know everything that we do um, that we need to know. And so we we play off each other and learn things from each other and that's what I love the most about the homeschooling community is that so many people have so many great ideas that can help each other so thanks again and we'll see you later